This video is our week three in review, Chain Rule Rules for 2016 AP Calculus AB. In our first example, we learned this week how to take the derivative of a to the x. Remember, the derivative of a to the x is a to the x, natural log a, dx, which means, remember to do the chain rule, if the inside function, in this case the exponent, is something other than x. Notice our exponent is something other than just x. So when we do dy dx, we get a to the x, natural log a, multiply by the derivative of that negative 3x squared, which is negative 6x. In our second example, this week we learned how to find the derivative of natural log. The derivative of natural log is 1 over x dx. Again, that means take the derivative of the inside function. So in this case, dy dx is equal to 1 over the inside function, which would be 4x squared minus 6x, multiplied by the derivative of the inside function, 8x minus 6. Notice that in both of these, the top and the bottom, we can divide by 2. So if we divide by a 2 on the top, we would get a 4x minus 3. On the bottom, we would get a 2x squared minus a 3x. In our third example, this week we learned how to do chain rule with square root functions. Remember that the inside function is 4x minus 1. The outside function is the square root. And the derivative of the square root is 1 over 2 root of the inside value. So let's go dy dx is equal to the derivative of the outside, 1 over 2 root. Don't change the inside, 4x minus 1. Multiply by the derivative of the inside, which would be 4 we can reduce the 2 and the 4 to get a 2 on the top on the bottom root 4x minus 1. In our fourth example, we have a chain chain problem. We're going to think of this function in a slightly different form so that we can see the inside function is indeed a chain rule. So, derivative of the outside function, which would be power rule, 5 something to the fourth power. Don't change the inside, so cosine root x. We're going to multiply that by the derivative of the inside, which is a chain rule. Derivative of the outside, cosine, would be negative sine. Don't change the inside function, root x. Multiply by the derivative of root x, which is 1 over 2 root x. We can simplify this a little bit. dy dx is equal to, we have this negative and this 5, which we can put together. So we have a negative 5 cosine to the fourth root x sine root x. Notice I moved this 4 back to its original position, and that's going to be all over 2 root x. In our fifth example, again, we have a chain rule problem with an inside function of 1 over x. So dy dx is equal to, now the derivative of the outside function secant would be secant something tangent something. Well, notice the something is 1 over x. So let's not change the inside function. And now we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Remember, 1 over x is the same thing as x to the negative 1. The derivative would be negative 1 x to the negative 2, or negative 1 over x squared. We should probably rewrite that as secant 1 over x, tangent 1 over x, all over 
x squared. And don't forget to put that negative either up top or out front. In our sixth example, we learned how to do product rule with chain rule. So let's go ahead and look at that. We have our first function f, our second function g. So we should go first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. So notice we have y prime this time. So y prime is equal to our first function is x squared minus 6x cubed. Our second function, let's think of that as being in that form. So we have multiply by 2. Don't change the inside. Multiply by the derivative of the inside would be cosine 2x times 2 plus our second function, which was uh, sine squared 2x, multiply by the derivative of our first function, which would be 3 something squared. Don't change the inside. Multiply by the derivative of the inside, which would be 2x minus 6. Looks like we could probably do a little bit of cleanup here. There are several things we could do, but at the minimum, we're going to want to take these twos and put them out front as a 4. We have an x squared minus a 6x cubed. We have a sine of 2x. We have a cosine of 2x. In our back term, we can uh, take the 3 and the 2x minus 6 and bring that out front. Perhaps we could simply distribute that as 6x minus 18. We don't have to, but we could. And then we have a sine squared 2x multiplied by x squared minus 6x squared. Again, there are many things we could do with that. I'm going to leave this one in that form. In example 7, we want to do the derivative and then plug in a pi halves for f of x is 3 cosine x. So f prime of x would be 3 multiplied by the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine x, or simply negative 3 sine x. We're now plugging in a pi halves. So we have negative 3 times sine of pi halves. Well, sine of pi halves is 1, which gives us a negative 3. In our eighth example, again, we are doing derivative plug-in. We have a chain rule problem. So f prime of x is equal to our inside function 4x minus 3, outside function square root x. So we would go 1 over 2 root something, because we have that memorized. Don't change the inside. Multiply by the derivative of the inside, which would be a 4. We can cancel the 4 and the 2 to give us a 2. So we have on the top 2, on the bottom, square root of 4x minus 3. We now want to do f prime of 1. So let's replace x with a 1. We have 2 times the square root of 4 times 1 would be 4 minus 3. That would give us 2 over the square root of 1, which is simply 2. In our ninth example, we're taking the derivative of, and we have a chain rule. We have our inside function as 4 minus 5x squared. Our outside function is cube root. So let's think of cube root as 4 minus 5x squared to the 1 -third power. Now when I take the derivative of this function, we have a power rule, 1 -third to the negative 2 thirds. We subtracted 1 -third minus 1 to get the negative 2 thirds. Don't change the inside. Multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is a negative 10x. We can now 
leave the negative 10x on the top, bring the 3 to the bottom, and let's rewrite this back in radical form as a cube root of 4 minus 5x squared quantity squared. In our last example, we did conceptual derivatives. Here we have two functions multiplied together. That would be product rule. So when we do g prime of x, because we want g prime of 1, meaning we have to do the derivative first, then plug in a 1, we would get our first function multiplied by the derivative of our second function plus our second function multiplied by the derivative of the first function. Let's now plug in a 1, meaning to replace all x's with a 1. So we have 3 times 1 squared times f prime of 1 plus f of 1 multiplied by 6 times 1. g prime of 1 would then be order of operations. 1 squared times 3 is 3 f prime of 1, if we look in the directions, we would see that that's a negative 2. Plus f of 1, they gave us the value negative 1. Multiply by 6 times 1, or 6. So now we have a negative 6 plus a negative 6, giving us negative 12.